This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University. And today I want to talk about how the ECB, the European Central Bank, is absolutely terrified of Bitcoin. I'll be referring to a blog post that they published a couple days ago called Bitcoin's Last Stand. And their thesis is that, to quote them, to quote this tweet, the apparent stabilization of Bitcoin's value is likely to be an artificially induced last gasp. It's funny because in this paper, they don't really talk about why it's artificially induced. It would appear that Bitcoin has a fairly free market, but basically they're saying that that Bitcoin is on the road to irrelevance. And this is a really strange thing from the outset. Bitcoin is going to be completely irrelevant really soon, which is why we are devoting a blog post to it. It doesn't usually make sense to give coverage to something that's going away really soon. But what I'm going to argue in this video is that the ECB is actually quite concerned about Bitcoin. This is the, the logical conclusion that we can reach. This paper, this blog post has two authors, Ulrich Beinzeil and Jürgen Schaff, and we'll be talking about them soon. But the, the real paradox is that, as I said, that this blog post was published at all. It seems very strange because the ECB is a powerful central bank with about $9 trillion worth of assets on their balance sheet. By contrast, Bitcoin is a really tiny protocol. By global standards, it has a market cap of just $325 billion. So the real question is, why is the ECB elephant writing blog posts about the Bitcoin mouse? Could it be that the elephant is worried about something? I like this tweet from Sunny Decree pointing out that Bitcoin becoming irrelevant is contradicted by the fact that the ECB has talked about it 75 times this year. If we take a look at the chart of the Bitcoin of Bitcoin denominated in euros, it would appear that the euro is actually struggling a lot more than Bitcoin is. The, this is obvious because the eurozone still has very high inflation. The balance sheet of the central bank of the ECB has been growing. We can see how much it's grown since the birth of Bitcoin in 2009. And it's especially grown. It's gone, gone straight up, just like the Fed's, the Fed's balance sheet since 2020. So this is the, the, the economic context and backdrop to the ECB attacking Bitcoin. And we all know the reason why, because Bitcoin offers an exit from the Eurozone fiat inflationary nightmare. Holders of the token, the euro token, which is issued by the ECB, also known as a currency, are going to be slowly boiled alive by monetary debasement. And this has been happening. This will continue to happen as it will with the US Fed as well. Could it be that Ulrich Beinzeil perhaps has an ax to grind? But before I talk about that, I just ask you if you're enjoying this video so far, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and maybe leave a comment or a question. So Ulrich Beinzel, one of the co-authors of this blog post, you can see here his typical typical peak fiat. He's the uh, jet director general of the market infrastructure and payments uh, part of the ECB. And if we take a look at what he has published, his previous blog posts, He's got one paper here, which is quite amusing, especially considering that he's attacking Bitcoin. This paper is called Towards the Holy Grail of Cross-Border Payments. Hate to tell you, Ulrich, this already exists. This Holy Grail was invented by Satoshi, and you're still trying to figure it out. But it looks like what Ulrich is really pushing are central bank digital currencies. This is the ax that he has to grind. And if you, I'll link to this in the description notes below, you can read about all the wonderful things he has to say about why CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, are a great thing. I'll quote a couple of quotes from this paper to give you an idea of the critique. Here's the first one. Bitcoin's conceptual design and technological shortcomings make it questionable as a means of payment. Real Bitcoin transactions are cumbersome, slow, and expensive. We've talked about this many, many times. This is always a very uh, beginner critique of Bitcoin. So I'm surprised that Ulrich fell for it, especially when he's an expert on payments and payment systems. But Bitcoin is actually quite fast for a network that offers final settlement. You need to compare it to something like Fedwire. You can't compare it to Visa or PayPal, which do not offer final irreversible settlement. I'll link to uh, the rabbit hole that you can go down is Bitcoin just too slow? I'll link to this video if you want to explore that a little bit more because that in, excel, in itself is a whole topic. Another quote from this paper, Bitcoin has never been used to any significant extent for legal real world transactions. This is simply a lie. As of last year, as of November of 2021, when this article was published, Bitcoin had settled more than $60 trillion worth of payments 
on chain since its inception. Now that is a tremendous, tremendous number. And a lot of those payments have obviously been settled. The bulk of them are in 2020, 2021, and 2022. So this is just not true. I also like this tweet from Scott Wolf saying that basically by peddling this misinformation, the ECB also reveals itself as a racist neo-colonial institution. Most notably, the ECB is saying that the Global South, where Bitcoin and Lightning Network use are skyrocketing, is irrelevant and day-to-day -day commerce is presumed illegal. So this is quite the irony coming from uh, coming from these Euro uh, fiat folks. Here's another quote from the paper, Bitcoin's conceptual design and technological shortcomings. This is, uh, this is incredibly ironic, obviously, given the fact that the Euro itself has the biggest conceptual design problem. This is really the elephant in the living room because the Euro and the Eurozone, it's a monetary union without a fiscal union. This is a flawed design from the beginning, a flawed conceptual design. In the Eurozone, you have the relatively frugal Germany, and then you have the relatively less frugal, more profligate southern countries like Italy, Greece, Spain, and Portugal. And this is why the, the ECB is, is structurally forced to print up fresh euros and buy their bonds. So Ulrich really should not, be should not be criticizing Bitcoin's conceptual design. I suggest that he cleans up his own house first before opining on Bitcoin. If you want to read more about ECB bond purchases, I will link to this article below. Finally, the critique we see, we see in this paper, it's also worth noting that the Bitcoin system is an unprecedented polluter. First, it consumes energy on the scale of entire economies. Again, this is sort of Bitcoin FUD 101. I've made probably 40 or 50 videos on this subject. I'll link to this most recent one, Bitcoin and the Energy Morality Police, that really dives down and goes into this. But I would respond in the current point in history to say, Ulrich, do you really do you want to know what else is really bad for the environment? I'll tell you what it is. Shutting down all of your nuclear power plants, as Germany has done, making your industrial base completely dependent on Russian energy, and then burning lots of coal and wood to keep warm this winter. So I'd suggest that Ulrich again gets his own house in order before he criticizes Bitcoin. Everything he says about Bitcoin e-waste and energy usage is basically a uh, is basically not true. And you only consider Bitcoin's energy usage to be a waste if you don't like Bitcoin. We could say that people watching YouTube videos is a waste of energy if we don't like YouTube. We could say that people using washers and dryers and dishwashers is a waste of energy. They should be doing this by hand. But again, it's it's in the, the eye of the beholder. And the fact that Bitcoin has settled tens of trillions of dollars worth of value shows that someone values that energy usage. And as I argue in this video, we don't really need the energy morality police telling us what is a good use of energy and what is not. I'll link to these articles about how Germans are increasingly burning wood to try to stay warm this winter. And again, I don't blame the people of Germany for this. This is a failing of their politicians. And here is Germ Germany turning to burning a lot more coal now that Russia has shut down their energy exports to Europe. So again, this is the ultimate irony here that uh, criticizing Bitcoin for its energy usage when Euro, the Eurozone has all these problems. The ultimate summary of this article is basically, as I began, we're so very concerned about this asset class that is about to become irrelevant. That's the, that's the contradiction there. You don't, write, you don't write blog posts about something that's about to disappear unless you're quite worried about it and you're actually worried that's going to stick around. Lol, we see right through you, ECB. The EU is built on a lie. The ECB is built on a lie. Of course, the US dollar and the US dollar financial system is built on a lie as well. And what makes Bitcoin so very refreshing in this corrupt fiat clown world is that Bitcoin is built on a foundation of absolute cryptographically verifiable truth. It's not built on the lies of people like the authors of this blog post. Central bankers and fiat finance will be consigned to the dustbin of history. In a few generations from now, we'll really wonder, our, our descendants will wonder why we gave so much power to people like Christine Lagarde and Jerome Powell, and we gave the money printer capabilities to just a small group of people. Here's my prediction that I would suggest to the ECB. The euro is actually not going to uh, be around anymore in 10 years from now. But at that point, Bitcoin will still be around and it'll be much bigger 
than the euro is today when you measure it by market cap. I think this is a very safe prediction to make, especially the eurozone breaking up because this is not sustainable what they're doing. And ultimately what's going to happen is these countries will break up into, into smaller zones and simply because the people of Germany are not going to want to support this money printing forever, especially when the money printing drives up winter energy costs. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.